What's going on you guys welcome back to the channel and today's video is going to be a continuation in our building tic-tac-toe in uh, Python using Kinter. Um, so this is an introduction to graphical user interfaces um, or GUIs and this is part four in this series so if you haven't checked out the first three be sure to go back and do that if this is something you want to follow along with line for line. The game we've built so far is uh, you select a character to play as and then once you hit start it draws this game board. Uh, you go ahead and select characters, the computer plays against you, and then um, ultimately it just fills in the board, you can reset it, but we haven't created the code to track when the game is actually over and if you win or lose yet. So that's what we'll be tackling in this video. Before I do get into it, if you do find this useful, um, then please go ahead and leave a subscribe to the channel and a like on the video, it helps me out a ton. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, just be sure to let me know about it in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right, so for this video, we're gonna be um, handling game over scenarios. So I'm gonna start by uh, creating a new variable and I'm gonna call it game over. And we're just gonna set equal to false when the game starts. And then uh, when the board is drawn as well, because this is kind of where we handle, um, this is where we handle uh, reset logic. So like after the game is over, you'd hit the button again if you wanted to play another round so we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna set equal to false when you enter there but then both places that uh, both places that a turn can happen so whether the player is taking a turn or the AI is taking a turn we're gonna um, call a function that I'm gonna call uh, check game over and we're actually gonna use that to check game over status so uh, we need to pass in the positions table because we're going to send it all of the moves that have been made in the game as a variable for it and we're going to use this thing to actually check the status of game over so let's go ahead and copy this line here and another thing you know how before we were saying well if it's the players turn and there's less than nine turns total we want to let them take a move now we're gonna say also and game over uh, is false because there's no sense letting uh, the player or the computer take a turn if game over is true. So uh, we'll include that in our player function and our AI function as well. Um, we'll go ahead and do the same thing here. And game over is false, which means we're going to need to call in the game over variable. You could absolutely, all these things I called in as globals, you could absolutely pass them in as parameters. Um, that's totally valid too. Some people would even argue it's better. I just do it this way because it works for me. And then we're gonna use the exact same uh, check game over here, which means we have to obviously come up and make uh, the game over checker. So let's call it define check game over, <clears throat> right? And both of them are going to be passing in the positions table. So we will do the same. And actually, since we're gonna be typing it quite a lot, I'm just gonna call it POS um, because as you'll see once we get into it, um, there's going to be a lot of uh, different conditions that could make you win. And so it's gonna save us a lot of typing time to just be able to say POS. Um, so we'll pull in game over as well because that's what we're actually checking and setting. <clears throat> but now let's take a look at scenarios that could actually end the game. So the first one I'm going to take a look at is actually just the first row across. So that's um, 0, 1, and 2 in your positions table. And if you add those three together and you get XXX, then uh, that's one scenario where the game is won, right? And then a uh, second one would be the second row. So 3, 4, and 5. And so if you get what's going on here, um, you might want to skip a couple minutes into the video because uh, I am just going to go through each scenario that could end the game and type in um, that scenario. So like next is the third row. 6, 7, and 8 equals xxx. And I'm doing an or statement and then a new line at the end of each of these. It's just a lot cleaner than getting like run on lines of code here. So we've handled the three horizontal conditions. Let's go ahead and add now the three vertical ones. So this is gonna be column one, which is gonna be zero, three, and six. And you can see with how many freaking uh, times I would be typing in positions, calling it POS saves actually a lot of characters um, over the course of this conditioning. So then column two is gonna be one, 
four and seven. And then equals, okay, x, x, x. And then the third vertical, the third column is gonna be two, five, and eight. Okay. And now there's only two more conditions, right? The diagonals. And so the first one, we're gonna say you start in the top left, you go through the middle, which is four, and then down to the bottom right, which is eight. And then the other one would be, let's add a space there. The other one would be you start in the top right, which is two, you go through the middle, which is four, and you stop in the bottom left, which is six, okay? So that was a lot of um, typing just to kind of handle this, but um, it was really important because these are all the different ways that X could win. So it's one big ass if statement to get into this, um, but if that happens, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our game over variable equal to true, and then we are going to put a label on the screen, which I'll call win label, and that's going to be equal to label, and we're gonna put it on root, and then we want the text to read X wins, okay? And so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, draw it onto the screen in our grid right here as well, just to cut down on total um, rungs of code. We'll put it in the middle there. Um, okay, but the good news is because we did all this right here, we don't have to like think through all the conditions again for the O's, right? We can just come in and anywhere that we had XXX, we can change to OOO. And I'll just go ahead and copy this. <clears throat> And I'll make it an L if, um, in theory, whichever one of these happens first should take care of it, but it's just good practice. If you want two things to be mutually exclusive, make it an L if instead of just a regular if, okay? So we'll go ahead and replace them all with O's. And now let's go ahead and say X wins. Instead, that's gonna say O wins. And then if neither of those are true, then we will just, um, say game over is false right which it probably was already false if we're running this function but that's okay because that's okay because now we're handling all three scenarios which is basically o wins x wins or no one wins and let's return game over because that's what we were checking here right okay so let's see that might do it um let's go ahead and run it and see if we made any mistakes here or if we've got it all right, let's play as X. Let's try to win here. I'll just go here. X wins, okay, very cool. Let's start it again. Let's see if we can make the computer win. O wins, Alrighty, nice. And you can't take any moves after that and you have to hit start to reset the game board. Um, so I would say that's working pretty good. Obviously, we're not keeping track of like total score. We haven't made the AI think or anything. And probably most importantly, this game board is ugly as sin. So in the next video, we're actually going to finally improve the aesthetic appearance of our app. But you can see we've created like a working um, tic-tac-toe game uh, that handles win conditions and everything. So hopefully you found that useful. If you did, I really pre appreciate a like on the video and a subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.